Ideally, we're going to solve a problem together. Now, like you've probably heard in our title, you know, what is plus five experience and what can the universities do about it? Well, before we dive into that, let's try to frame the problem right now. So if we were to look at students as a customer and we actually understood their pain points, what would they be? Take a second. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, well, my homework, my assignments, my readings, and those were the, the main little pain points. But if you actually research and actually speak to the students and ask them what were the actual major pain points was working in groups and also finding a job after graduation. So that's very interesting when you think about it. So let's ponder what that means. So when you're looking at working in groups, okay, well, you have a personal success criteria that you want your best grade in the group. Everyone works around you. They all have different criteria that they want. Maybe you want to be, they want to see, someone else wants an A, and that's where the pain really evolves, and that's where all the things happen. Okay, so it makes sense why that's a major pain point. Next is getting the job. And when we look at that, that kind of makes sense as well. We don't train our students how to get positions and how to get jobs. You know, they kind of just go out there in the industry and they just flood the market with their CVs, which is a major pain point. But when we look at that, why do they do this? Well, they haven't been trained how to do it, so they then trained how to work in academia. And then they try to replicate that process, similar to what Jacqueline was saying. They're trying to replicate that, which is a new game. Oh, so that's quite interesting when you look at this. So now let's dive a little bit deeper. Okay. So when you get to the new game, you have plus five experience that you see all over job descriptions and you see that. And every student kind of loses their mind when they say, that's not me, I can't apply for that job or I'm just gonna flood the market. And we don't know really what that means. Well, I'm happy to tell you, I'm here to actually tell you what five years experience means because I've been working on it for four years. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably saying, four years, Pete, you've been working on this for four years? Yeah, I'm really fun at parties, to be honest. I have a notepad and I have a pen and you should see me go. No, but in all seriousness, I actually really want to understand what was going on inside the heads of our industry partners and really try to focus on how to actually help our students bridge this gap. So. Without further ado, let's talk about what five years experience is. And let's actually kind of make it a little bit more fun. I'm gonna show you some of my internal monologue during these times that happened. So first things up is, well, I, we, they would say, I want students to understand what they want. Okay, well, that's a little bit broad. What do you mean by that? Well, they apply to so many different positions and they don't really understand what they are. They're all different. And because they do that, I don't trust them. That's interesting. You don't trust them because of all the jobs that they need to. We're going to take note of this. The next one is, well, I want them to understand what a business case is. I write the business case. How many students of yours and how many people that come into the new industry are writing business cases? This doesn't really make sense, whether it's a one pager or a seven page. Okay, well, I really don't want to understand the, the business case per se. I want them to understand that when they do something, there's a business value around it. So when you do X, right? You need to make sure that do you increase revenue or do you reduce cost? Okay, that's interesting, okay. But they also need to understand KPI definitions, so key performance indicators. Okay, so their success criteria of the channel or of the partnership or of the business or of the team, what are they based on? What are they graded on? That's interesting because normally that's not shared actually with young professionals. So that's quite interesting and in how to understand how to do that. Okay, next things up, process improvement and project management. Well, these are completely two different things. Which one is it? Well, with, uh, you know, with the new industry and, uh, and the technology that's happening, our processes are kind of in shambles. So we need a lot of people who are coming in and that can learn and then change our processes. Okay, that's important. Well, and project management? Well, on top of the processes, we need to put the project management and see how that works. Okay, agile, waterfall, do you care? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It could be waterfall, it could be agile, it could be a mixture of both. It's more of the framework and putting in the framework on top of it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, so our students are really, really good at working in a vertical team, uh, very top-down approach, but they're not really good at going horizontal. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, we work with different business units and you know, so if they study finance, they're gonna have to work with supply chain marketing, they're gonna have to work with HR and everyone around them. And it's like speaking different languages and they don't really have this training in schools. Well, that makes sense, right? We have business schools, we have engineering schools, we have medical schools, you know, we have, we're all siloed. And even in those silos, we have different silos inside where, you know, accounting and finance students don't talk to HR students 
or mechanical engineers really don't talk to civil engineers. So, okay, that's actually interesting. That's something actually painful. And, you know, so thanks for listening. No, no, I'm not done. What do you mean I'm not done? This list is getting pretty big, isn't it? Well, we also want them to understand what is the root cause when they do something. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, some students kind of hear the problem and without asking more questions and asking, you know, gathering requirements, they kind of just go right for the problem and try to solve it. But it's more of a symptom than a root cause. Okay, that's something interesting that we can look at. Uh, and the last one, okay, thank God it's the last one, okay, is, is stakeholder management. Okay, what do you mean by that? Well, stakeholder management because, you know, we need them to understand different stakeholders want different things and they need to be able to communicate properly, understand the business value, going back to everything we just talked about, making sure the processes are right. And that's what we mean by five years experience. Okay, so let me get this straight. When you say five years experience on a job description, you mean this. Yes. Why don't you just write that? Well, because we've never done this exercise, which is ironic for root cause analysis. Um, or we just don't have enough pay, you know, room on the page to actually write all these things. Okay, so that makes sense. So you're saying whenever you write five years experience, you mean this. You're not talking about technical skills. No, technical skills are some, something completely different. This is the business aspect. This is it. No matter the industry, no matter the industry. Okay, so that's very interesting. So now we're looking at this stream, right? The student graduates, they get to this point, they want a new job. Now we know what five years experience is, but there's still a gap. So let's ask our business industry, what, what do you mean by this? So uh, industry partner, it's easy to hire students, right? Because they're all coming, they're all trying to go. Actually, it's not. What do you mean? No, it's not actually easy for us. Uh, we, our time to hire is actually very high. We don't really know because we don't trust. They don't communicate. All the things that we just talked about is actually a nightmare to hire young professionals because we don't know what we're hiring and we don't trust the system. Whoa, okay, this is very interesting. So what do you do about it? I don't know, we're gonna have, we have a lot of funding of reskilling, upskilling, and this is why we pay premium dollars for people who are already experienced in other jobs and we can steal them. But everyone just steals each other's, and that's why, you know, that's why people only stay roughly 18 months at most jobs. Okay, so this is a huge problem. This is not just everything. So when we look at this, there's a gap over here for industry, there's a gap over here for the student, and now there's a big hole. Who owns that hole? To be honest, nobody. But the closest person is actually the universities. And this is what we're going to talk about the next step. All right, so when, when we normally think about universities, we normally think of curriculum, which is obviously what people do because that's what most of us have done. Okay, so we only think of curriculum. Well, when you look at curriculum, they have to, they don't just change curriculum easy. It's not an easy process. They have to gather requirements from the industry or whoever they're trying to fulfill, bring this up, look at the research, try to add that in, and then make the curriculum and then find the professor and everything. And the whole process, Quick as possible is maybe 12 months, normally two years. That's long, the business is not gonna wait that long. So while the businesses are changing very rapidly, already we have a gap grow. Okay, and I think that's where the misconception where most people are saying universities are bad, they're outdated, da 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 because we're only thinking about the curriculum. The universities are much more about than just curriculum. You know, so you have the research aspect, well, the research aspect doesn't really play in this position, is very, very small amount. You also have continuing education. Well, that's a little bit closer, but they normally market themselves more to, you know, people already who have jobs and they're just looking to upskill uh, and not really, and they're still relatively slow, not as fast as what the businesses and the students are looking for. Okay, so there needs to be maybe another service offering. So what would that look like? When we look at a service offering, we just talked about how the companies are going through digital transformation. Now, everyone's doing it, but is, is academia. To be honest, not really. They're, they're updating with Zoom and they're updating with Teams and all these things of more of the technology, but the actual processes are not actually being updated. So let's look at that. Okay. So the businesses are turning rapidly. They're, they're going on their maturity curves. They're all at different maturity levels. So ones are faster like the fan corporations, and then you have people on very maturity levels. Okay. They're going to get faster requirements more and more and more. And we have to adapt to that if we want to be the, the pipeline. Okay, so we have to kind of relatively match that speed and process. Now, if we're gonna do that, 
we have to make sure that we work in the same fashion in the same way as tech. Oh, how are we working in the same way as tech? We're, we're talking about academia. Yeah, yes. But when we're doing this, we need to have someone, you know, let's say a product manager who understands the whole value proposition. And I want you to understand that this service offering that we, sh we should be delivering is not going to be product based, like curriculum, like customer, uh, like career advancement, or anything other in the university. It has to be more customer focused, right? So we have to say, okay, the product manager is going to own the product or the feature that we're going to be creating. They're going to take everything and all the requirements for both customers, the students, and from the industry professionals. They're going to understand this and they're going to work with the UX designer. Okay, the UX designer is going to create the optimal experience. I'm sure you guys all have touched apps and you're being very happy with the experience. You can you can thank those people. And then we we create this experience and then we work with architecture architects to create proper architecture that will scale and be sustainable in the future and the long term. Now that's the strategic part. Okay, let's go a little bit of implementation. Then it would go funnel down into more of a product ownership where there's a bunch of product ownership owners in all different verticals of the university and they would create workshops with implementation teams. That would make sure. And then they would make sure they would work in deployments of two weeks to one month, always creating workshops, always getting gathering information and working, working, working faster. So we're getting closer to close this gap than just create something at large all the time and missing the mark. Okay, this could work. I think the students would be happy if we do this and I think the businesses would be this. But what about academia? Let's put on that hat. I wish I had a McGill hat for this, but I really hate hats. So let's look at this. Okay, well, what would be the problems in academia? Well, the first thing in the academia, they're gonna say, well, we're not gonna give a degree for this. It makes sense, but I don't think we need a degree for this aspect. I think we can just give out certificates similar to Coursera or edX, or we don't even have to work. We just work with the business units. And as long as they trust and we communicate with them, which was their main problem of that value proposition, I think they would actually accept it. Okay, fine. We don't really have this talent that you were talking about in, in academia, which is fair. We don't. That's normally where tech companies come in. And this is where we actually probably have to pivot, but this should be a new business unit inside the university that actually helps our students to get ready for education, uh, for the, the industry. Okay, whatever. What about what are we going to do on the business side where there's going to be cannibalization? There's definitely going to be cannibalization, but similar to what happened with Microsoft and Netflix, they had to catalyze old products that they made to actually grow and they're doing perfectly fine where, where they are right now. Okay, what about if the academics don't want to? Well, that's where we actually have a problem. But to be honest, the answer that I would give is it doesn't really matter. Even if you don't want to, the market is efficient enough that people will see this hole and they're gonna fill it no matter what. And the only reason it hasn't been filled because they don't have the trust and they don't have the relationships that you have, ex university, who's been around for longer than 100 years, being that pipeline of talent. So you need to think about how are we going to adapt if you really want to do so? Because we have a saying in tech, you know, today's differentiator is tomorrow's prerequisite. That's just how we think. So I have a question to all the universities and today, McGill University. Are you ready for change? Thank you.